Well, good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. You have the Rhino right here. I'm by my lonesome. I'm very sorry if you wanted one of my cast members, but it's me. We're going to be casting again. I think we're going to do some cast changes. So if you're in the Niagara region and you're douche-free and you want to join me and my buddies that stay with us, Anyway, um, the beer we are drinking today is from my buddies at the Railway City Brewing Company. Railway City Brewing Company is out of St. Thomas, Ontario. They are known for Iron Spike. They are known for the Dead Elephant Ale. They have some really cool seasonals that come out, like the Shambok. They have the Black Coal Stout. They have the uh, Roundhouse Pilsner, uh, Cranberry Pilsner, uh, the Honey Elixir. Some really cool beers come out of that brewery. This beer seems to be a step back in all honesty um, they had their blonde they had their copper they had their amber they had their dead elephant all of them had very nice flavors but they were all very approachable so you already had a fairly approachable beer from almost anybody then you had your pilsners even more approachable now you have this this is Canada Southern Draft Canada Southern Draft. Uh, we are looking at this. It says crisp, smooth, fresh, uh, handcrafted, 4.3% alcohol by volume. And really, that's that's the reason it seems like a step back is we're just going to a draft beer, right? So I'm going to expect a golden lager. I'm going to expect a very boring beer, a pub beer. A pub beer is great, but your blonde was already a pretty big pub beer. Um, let's just stop talking about it and jump into it and see what we got, right? Right? Yeah. And there we go. Just like I said, <laughs> beautiful golden beer. Um, there's two things that could happen here. This could taste awesome, and I could really like it. Or it could taste like a macro beer, and I'd wonder why I'd pay for this over something else that's probably going to be cheaper at the bars. That's the key to it, right? Yeah, you want people to buy local. You really do want people to buy local. But you want your quality to be worth the price that you're paying. This has quality, I can guarantee it, but it's by the people that make it. But is it going to be worth paying more than a macro brand? That's the key. That's the key to this right here. Let's see. What's it smell like? Really, it kind of smells like fresh grass clippings, in all honesty. Fresh grass clippings. Which means there's actual hops in there. Smells good that way. Smells kind of refreshing. Kind of like a uh, Japanese loose leaf green tea. I only know that because I make those at work every once in a while. Yeah, kind of like grass clippings. try it but I don't want to at the same time in, in complete honesty I don't want to at the same time let's try it cheers Now there are a lot of craft breweries doing this right now. The lower alcohol percentage, what we call bouge beers. Uh, bouge is what we've given the name of a craft beer. And it kind of seems to be wanting to be a macro beer. Um, 
This is a Bouget beer. Very, very easy drinking. So, there's a point for it. Almost tasteless, in all honesty. Low alcohol percentage, so sessionable. And a, a price point, at the LCBOs at least, very close to, or slightly cheaper than, your big macro brands. But then you think about bringing this into a bar, and because it's craft, it's going to be exp more expensive than the big budget brand, uh, the big macro brands. There's a difference when you get to a bar from buying it on your own at an LCBO. If I'm going out to a picnic and I want a light bodied, low alcohol percentage beer, I could see myself buying this. I really could. But if I went at a bar, I don't really think I would. Just because of the price differences. But I can't take anything away from it. Fairly tasteless, a little bit of grass clippings. Um, no funk to it, no corn to it, no rice to it. Just simple, easy drinking lager. Nice and cold, nice and warm, whatever the way you want it. It's going to be nice and refreshing. Just nothing special about it. Of the, uh, of the seven Bougie beers we've now had, I would put this at the top because it has no weird funk to it. Above Rock Cut Lager, above Hockley 100, above all the other ones we've had. But, it's still not for me personally. It could be for a lot of people. I wouldn't even call this a gateway beer though because it's not really giving you any flavors you wouldn't get from a macro company. What this is giving you is no bloating, it's giving you no weird hangover from all the chemicals. It's giving you the the pleasure of supporting something local and the pleasure of supporting something that's still Canadian. Canadian owned, Canadian managed, Canadian run, and Canadian employed. Uh, I know Molson is Canadian employed for the most part, but you know what I'm getting at here. It's not a big conglomerate. You're supporting a little guy. What can I give it? I, can, I can't give it over a 625. It's, it's a good beer, it's a sessionable beer, but it's not a beer I think I would really pay for it again. I might pay for it if I'm, if I'm camping or something, as I said, but I don't see myself buying this again because there's just so many better beers out there than this. But I would love to get some Bud, Molson, Bud Miller Coors drinkers to drink this because this could start them off in the right direction don't think it will, but it could. It could get them going, oh, I didn't get a hangover, I didn't get sick, I didn't get a s disgusting, disgusting headache, I didn't feel bloated, and I did something good by supporting local. It's the only thing I can see about this. If you don't want to, don't do it. Buy the big guys. You're not, you're not really, I'd rather you buy the little guys, but you're not really missing anything by buying the little, uh, the big guys over this. Thank you. Bye.